Welcome to this EuroLean Plus video lecture. Today we will explain how key lean production control principles can be used in a high variety, low volume manufacturing situation. The CONWIP FIFO TACT planning and control system was developed at the company Eaton Holek in the Netherlands. Janus Slomp, Jos Bokorst, and Remco Germs were involved in the development of the system. They wrote two articles about it in the journals Production Planning and Control and Interfaces. The system is used in several companies. It is easy to implement and does not ask a lot of data. The key questions came from industry, from Eaton Holek. How to shorten delivery times of our manufacturing departments while keeping an efficient use of our equipment? And how to assure delivery performance? The basic inspiration for solving the problem came from a precise look at the so-called U-shaped cell. Here you see an example of a U-shaped cell. A material cart, on which there are several components needed for final assembly, needs to visit several stations. A saw, a lathe, a horizontal and vertical mill, grinding equipment, and an inspection station. The demand is such that two workers are sufficient to work in the U-shaped cell. Worker 1 starts with the first operation, sawing, on a component which lies on the raw material cart. Next, he goes to final inspection and inspects all finished components on a cart. After finishing the available work for the final inspection, he continues with grinding. The next queue is free, so it is okay to do the grinding. After this, he continues with vertical milling. Doing this, he fills the buffer for the next operation. Then he starts the cycle again. Worker 2 makes a similar routing, also in the opposite direction as the material flow. The workload of Worker 2 is in a balance with the workload of Worker 1. The worker who needs the most time for his or her cycle determines the maximum output of the system. There are some basic lean principles when we see the U-shaped cell as a black box. So, without understanding what happens inside the U-shaped cell, we can find some principles. First, there is the Conwick principle. The number of jobs in the system is constant. Little's law helps us to understand that in this case, if demand is constant, then also the average throughput time is constant. Another principle is FIFO, or first in, first out. The carts leave the system in the same sequence as they enter the system. This takes care of minimizing the variability of throughput times. Each cart has the same throughput time. The next principle is tact. The workers know how much time they have for their routing. This depends on the demand of the customer or the next cell. The tact principle is important for realizing sufficient output. In the Conwit Pifo tact system, we will use the three principles in a high variety, low volume manufacturing system where all jobs are different and ask for a different routing. Let's look at a case study from where this method was developed. Eaton Holek is a global technology leader in power management solutions that make electrical, hydraulic, and mechanical power operate more efficiently, effectively, safely, and sustainably. Their manufacturing department is divided into three independent production units based on the product characteristics, sheet metal, turning and milling, and copper bars. The Conwit FIFO TACT system was initially developed for the copper bar, or PMC3, unit. Later on, the system has also been implemented in other units. Here you see some of the products of the PMC3 unit. As you can see, products differ in size and form. Lot sizes are very small. What are the characteristics of the copper bar unit? The unit is able to perform a number of processes such as punching, trimming, bending, drilling, milling, and benchworking. The number of different routings are high. Furthermore, the processing times for product and process type differ substantially. The unit is basically a dual resource constraint system. There are more workers than machines. The key bottleneck is the number of workers. Finally, the copper unit works in two shifts, a morning and an evening shift, and few workers work in the daytime. This unit had major problems. The work and process was high, sometimes more than 200 jobs in the system. The release of jobs was done by the MRP system of the company, basically a push system. Planners released the jobs during process planning. Their idea was this. The earlier we release jobs, the higher the probability that the job will be finished on time. However, the delivery of performance was low. The planning department used several priority rules by which they informed the workers about priorities. It was the intention of the part manufacturing management to improve the planning and control of the unit. The manager, Han Buschers, started a project with the help of students and researchers from the University of Groningen. 
The customers expect fast and on-time product deliveries with high quality and at low cost. Reducing lead time and improving the service level is thus of major importance. In order to realize this, the CONWIP FIFO TACT system has been developed. Three key lean principles were translated to the high variety, low volume situation at Eaton Holick. First, CONWIP was suggested. A limit was set on the number of jobs in the copper bar unit. This measure takes care of short average throughput times of jobs. Second, the workers were instructed to use the first in system first out rule to focus on the oldest jobs on the work floor. This principle reduces the variability in throughput times of jobs. Next, the tack time principle was added to the system. The workers were informed about their productivity and the manufacturing target of the day. Now we will explain how the principles were used by the workers of the copper bar unit. Schematically, the system of the copper bar unit can be drawn as follows. The workers in the red area are responsible for having no more than a certain number of jobs in the system. The daily output of the copper bar unit, in terms of number of jobs, indicates the number of jobs that may be released daily by the planning department. Released jobs are made visible in an input buffer. The first operation in the copper bar unit was punching. At this station, some nesting of jobs was important to save setup time. The puncher picks the best jobs from the input buffer A. In order to support the workers, a screen has been placed at the work floor that gives information about the work in process level, the FIFO priority of jobs, and the extent to which the unit realizes the required tact output. Let us explain more in detail the elements on the screen. First of all, we see all the jobs and the time they have spent on the work floor. The last job that entered the system has card number 3 and is now 1 hour and 34 minutes in the system. As we can see, there are 18 jobs in the system. The CONWIP level is 60, so that is fine. The workers in the copper bar unit will always try to limit the number of jobs in the units. This supports their aim to have less than 18 hours, or 60 times 18 minutes, in the system. There is one job, 41, which has already spent more than 23 hours in the system, so this job gets priority. If jobs are late, the workers in the cell write down the reasons for the lateness. This is input for improvement activities. The screen is also useful information for the manager of the department. He sees immediately whether or not everything is going well. Finally, the screen gives information about the tact time performance of the cell. As can be seen, at 10.33 a.m., the unit finished 11 jobs more than was needed according to tact time output. In this particular case, the copper unit has more workers in the morning shift than in the evening shift, so they had to produce in advance. So, the workers in the copper bar unit have an information screen which helps them to finish sufficient jobs with short throughput times. The system also simplifies the release of jobs by the planner. He now uses a poll principle. Each day, he releases the same number of jobs as were finished the day before. The new jobs get a sheet with the color of the release day in their order folder. So, Tuesday is green and Wednesday is brown. After releasing jobs, the copper unit gets three days to finish the job. So, for example, there should be no more green jobs after Thursday. In this case, management decided to give three days in order to give the puncher, who takes care of the first operation in the copper bar unit, the opportunity to select jobs in such a way to minimize the changeover time needed at the punching machine. All key persons in the company who are responsible for the planning and control of jobs in the copper bar unit are happy with the new system. They all have their own unique responsibility. The planner does some sequencing of jobs. Based upon the average number of jobs finished in the copper bar unit, he is able to estimate the ability of the system to produce future jobs. If needed, he may suggest to the team leader to hire more workers, or he may decide to subcontract some of the jobs. He is responsible for releasing jobs at least three days before their MRP due dates. The puncher is responsible for the sequence in which the jobs enter the copper bar unit. His objective is to save as much changeover time on the punching machine as possible, under the constraint that the unit starts the colored jobs in a timely fashion. The other workers in the copper bar unit just have the responsibility to realize the required daily output and to avoid red jobs which are spending too long in the system. The performance improvements realized at Eaton Holick were spectacular. They realized an almost 100% delivery performance while keeping productivity targets and short throughput times. The CONWIP FIFO TACT system, and the philosophy behind it, has inspired several companies to move from a push to a poll planning and control system.
The system does have a number of advantages. First, it is a simple system, easy to implement, and it fits well to the opinions of workers with respect to the planning and control of their work. Workers understand the nonsense of having too many jobs on the work floor. The system also divides planning and control tasks such that it fits to the responsibilities and control options of the people involved in executing jobs. Furthermore, it is interesting to note that the system fits well with other planning and control concepts, for instance, period batch control and polka. It is difficult to mention a disadvantage of the system. The system was also successfully implemented in other manufacturing units at Eaton Holick. However, it was less successful if there was a limited cross-training in the unit and if there was a clear machine bottleneck. These aspects reduce the options a manufacturing team has to have an impact on the performance of the system. Thank you for watching this video on the Lean Production Control Principles of Conwip, FIFO, and TACT.